What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, back for another episode of the fighting game tutorial. I'm at my new place this time, so uh, I'm not exactly sure how the audio is going to come out because I have the mic in a different spot, now I'm moving it close to me, so it'll probably be pretty bad audio, but I wanted to <laughs> kind of test it out a bit, so I figure let's uh, let's just do this this episode and we'll see how it comes out. I'm going to move this over here because I can see the audio levels. And here we go. So in this episode, we are going to be going over the character select screen. Basically, we're going to uh, continue doing what we did last time, but we're going to do it in the functionality side of things. Last time was the design side of things, so I showed you how I had the design view for the widget, as well as um, basic like left and right, uh, switches between these buttons, that kind of thing. This time, I want to make it so if you click or press enter on one of those buttons, we will actually set the character class, and you will be able to play as that character in the level that you load. So, we're, go we're just going to get started here. Um, I'll show you this demo again real quick, and just to show you that it's working. So, I, last time I clicked the mannequin, this time I'm clicking the mutant, and we spawn as the mutant. Uh, so there's a few things we're going to need to do here. It's probably actually a little bit more complicated than you would expect, but it's not that bad. We can be done in 15 minutes, probably. All right, let's go. So first of all, uh, our character select screen. This was our design view for it. So we had a button hidden behind the image, which I happen to give color, but you could make invisible. And if you remember correctly, we also had left and right controls. Uh, so in the navigation section on the button, you could press left and you would do the left for the character button one, which would mean you would, if you press left on the keyboard, you would then highlight the mannequin. And if you press right on the mannequin, you would then highlight the mutant. Pretty simple stuff. Uh, we're going to leave that alone and add a little bit more to it. We're going to make it so you can click it and do this as well as press enter on it. Um, but... We're not going to start with that. I just wanted to uh, catch you up to where we are. We are still here. And that's what we're going to need to do, but don't worry about that just yet. There's a few things we need to change. So in the last episode, I showed you how to do it with the game mode. And let me make this a little bit cleaner for you guys. Sorry about that. I forgot I did not clean this. There we go. All righty. Good enough for now. And we'll straighten these for you. To, oh, here we go. We'll just move these down. There we go. Nice and neat. Okay, so this is probably step one and what we should do first of all. So in the last episode of the episode before this, I can't exactly remember which one it was, we did the determine character class function. And this was where we made it so you could actually uh, look at the a certain variable in the code and spawn different actors and or player classes because of it. For example, we could spawn our mutant and or our mannequin based on that variable, data. It was an enum uh, that I called character class. Before when we were doing this, uh, we were using the game mode, which is actually a relatively viable way to do it. Uh, you can do it that way depending on how you set up your game. However, it is significantly harder than just using Unreal's game instance. The reason for that is the game mode and the game state change between levels. So in our case, I wanted to make a main menu level, which I'll show you how to do in a second. Um, and I wanted that level to contain the main menu data, of course. And to do that, um, I would have to switch around the way that the game mode was getting its data. It's very possible, so if you know enough about it, it's no problem to do that, but it, it's still significantly more complicated than something that Unreal has called the game instance. So the game instance is persistent, and it is created when Unreal loads up, or when the game loads up, and it is destroyed when Unreal is closed. So basically, anything you set in here will be persistent for the entire session. Now, for saving out data, like if you add a favorite character or character customization that you wanted to save out, you'd save that out to a file. But the game instance is good for bringing things between levels and saving temporary data. 
So, um, the things that I would like to do here to make this as easy as possible and still be a very efficient way of doing it is instead of using this variable in the game mode, we're going to move it to the game instance. So let's get started on the code and then everything will kind of fall into place after that once you see it. So if you go to add new, do your new C++ class like we've done a lot, and then you can go to uh, show all classes, type in game instance. And I did it off of this one, game instance. You could do it off of the uh, platform game instance as well, but honestly, I don't know enough about these. I did, I did do research on them, and people kind of have a little bit of a debate as to which one they go to use, whether it be platform or the default game instance. Um, I honestly don't know what is better uh, with the research that I've done, and I've never had to use the platform game instance. I've always used the game instance as the default, so I'm going to continue doing that. Um, I just wanted to bring that up. You could use this one, and if anybody knows you know, more than I do and knows why this one would be beneficial, then feel free to comment down below. That would be great. Um, I'll pin it if anyone has a good explanation. But I will do some research and probably write in the description why it is. Anyway, it's nothing important. Just use this game instance for now. Uh, that's the safe bet. You could always change it later. It's pretty easy to make a class. So once you use the game instance here, um, you can just hit next, and then it'll get you to name it and all that. I've already done that, so I'm not going to do it, but just name it whatever you want. I called mine base game instance. So if we go to the code, this is what was in the game mode before. You'll see I took it out of the game mode. There's no enum in the game mode. And now I go to my base game instance, and here it is. It's the same enum, but I just moved it over here. And then I also made a character class enum variable. So you just take the name of the enum, e character class, and put it right here. Name your variable, which I just called character class, and make sure you can see it in Blueprint. You, that's this U property here. And in doing that, that means when we access the Blueprint, or when we access the game instance in Blueprint, we can also get this character class. And that's how we're going to set up what the main menu decides to tell the game for when we load into the the actual map that we're going to fight in. So it's pretty simple. If you look in the CPP, I have nothing. This is what's auto-generated, so I haven't even added anything to the CPP file yet. I just wanted a variable in here that we could change and use in Blueprint. Simple enough, right? Make sure you build, rebuild, compile, whatever it is you got to do. Then, I would make a new level for this, because we're going to get into spawning the widget, and I don't want to... I mean, you could spawn it over top of the level, and that would be fine, as long as you change out your characters before you get rid of the widget. However, that's extremely bad when it comes to fast load times, if you're keeping everything persistent. So you won't notice it now, but if you did your whole game like that, you'd have to be very careful with your, manage, your memory management, you could do it, and I'm not sure uh, how easy it is because I've never tried to do that, but I, I wouldn't really recommend it. It's much easier to just make a new level and then send the data between the levels. So to do, make a new level, you go to add new like everything else, just hit level. That's it. I've already made mine. I called my main menu. And you don't have to do anything with it except um, you can open your level blueprint. And then just in your begin play, do create widget. You've seen this before. We've done this plenty of times. But you do create widget, and then you select your you uh, select the class's character select, which is uh, this guy right here. And then you just add it to the viewport so we can actually see it. Really simple. Again, this is probably not the final, like the final implementation of this. It'll probably change. But this is the easiest way and the way I always use to spawn things on the screen. That way we can test them and play around with them. I'm going to close this because we don't really need it. But once you do that, um, and if you followed the last episode, you will have already done that just during your other on your other level, not on the main menu. So I'm just suggesting you do it on the main menu now. Once you do that, uh, we can go to, let's see, the character. Okay, a few things. So... We're going to start with the character select screen because this is what the video is about. So this is the main thing we got to do, get working. The other things are kind of things I would like to get working, uh, things, I would, things that I did a little bit extra just because I thought they were nice. 
So let's start with this. Now, if you go back to your buttons that we did the navigation steps on, right here, how we did this stuff, if you scroll down just two more things, it's the very bottom tab, events. There's one called on pressed. On pressed is basically any time that it receives an, an okay, like yes, this has been used. So enter, mouse click, A on a, on a Xbox controller, on an Xbox controller, X on a PlayStation controller, whatever. Um, that would be anytime your input is basically, yes, I, this button has been pressed, continue. So if you do, if you press the little plus sign here, click on that, it'll automatically make this event for you called on pressed and the name of the button that was pressed. When you do this, all you have to do is make the logic you want to happen afterward. Well, since we made our base game instance class and we made our character class variable that we can set, <coughs> That we're going to use elsewhere you can get the game instance cast to the base game instance which is our iteration of it you can set the character class to the character class you want in my case i have mannequin or mutant right now so if we click on character button one which is the mannequins we want to spawn the mannequin if we click on character button two that's the mutants we want to spawn the mutant so you can see mannequin and mutant respectively and then right after that, you can open the level name of the level that you want to go to. Now, normally in a lot of fighting games, you'll probably have a level select as well. So you might wa not want to do this yet. But for the, pur <coughs> excuse me. For the purpose of this tutorial, uh, we don't have a level select. We just have the one level. So just go ahead and put your level name in. Uh, if you didn't rename it like I didn't, it's going to be side scroller example map. And just uh, call right click and do open level like that and that's what this is and just put your level name in now if you did that um, that would be good and you would get all the way to here but you wouldn't be able to get into the level just yet or you would be able to get into the level but you wouldn't be able to actually see any other characters other than your default character like my default character is mannequin and that's because in our default game mode BP we made we have to change the enum now to use the base game instance as well, not just the game mode and not just the drop down box. So this is the one where we set the actor that we're spawning. Literally do the same thing we just did, except instead of setting the character class, like right here, you're gonna get the character class. So get your game instance, cast your base game instance, and then get character class. Like that. Just. And uh, then uh, you can drag it into the enum. If it doesn't take it, you can always drag off of this and do uh, switch, and it'll bring up switch on any character class, and you just select that one. That's this right here. And now we're not picking which one uh, the character class is going to be in the game. The player is essentially picking the game. Now the player is us, um, but the you know if you gave this to your friend or whatever, he could literally pick either one of those and it would succeed. So what I mean by that is now that you have it setting the game or the character class in the game instance, you can also use that game instance to get the character class. And this works for all types of variables. So now if you've done all that correctly, you will be able to, actually there is one other thing you have to do, excuse me. So you do have to, when you make a new game instance, it's kind of not the same as the others. So, you know, usually when you make a new one, uh, a new class, like a new game mode or a new game state, you set the stuff here. With the game instance, you have to go a little bit deeper. If you go to your main menu, you can go to edit, project settings. Go down to, uh, sorry, go to project, maps and modes. Scroll all the way to the bottom and game instance and switch the game instance to your overridden game instance game instance sorry hard for me to say that so here we go and if you select that now if you've done all that correctly you should be able to just select on either one of these characters and you'll spawn in the new level with your new character and you can see since he's got his abilities and hitboxes he's actually the mutant character and not the mannequin character perfect there is one thing I would uh, I want to add here at the end and I recommend you do this anyway. But it, it occurred to me because now that we're switching between levels, your pointers for player one and two, remember we made these? 
player one or player two player one right here and they come from the game mode these pointers should um, they should actually be checked if they're valid or not before using them is valid this little box right here basically checks if the object is not null and not being destroyed at the moment or ha or has been destroyed even so what that means is if you were to go back to the main menu player one would be null again because there's no player controllers or player instances on the main menu only when you're in the game so if for whatever reason this were to pop up your game would actually crash if it was in a pack you know in a in a build in a packaged in an executable anything you want to call it but it won't crash in the editor it should give you an error or warning and that's why i wanted to point this out i got that because i forgot when you change levels you know make sure we're looking out for that so i wanted to add that in here so if you go to your character hud where we're doing the health bar percent just uh drag off of player one and player two for your health bars do an is valid check bring that into the branch and only if it's valid do you want to access the player health? Otherwise, you'll get the issue right here when you try to access this. But if it is valid, then go ahead and return the player health, and you're good to go. That'll get rid of the warnings, errors, and it'll get rid of crashes if, again, you're doing it in an executable or a shipping build. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I think that's probably about good for now. Um, oh, yeah, one thing here's the last thing that i wanted to say so i would also recommend we are still having the player one and player two in the game mode not something we should necessarily put in the game instance because you don't want them player one and player two necessarily being uh used or active during the main menu like we just talked about but this should probably be in the game state i'm not going to move it for now because we're not focusing on multiplayer and I will explicitly point that out when we get into multiplayer, like networking. However, it is something important to note that it will be a, it will be significantly better if you put this in the game state, in my opinion. It will definitely make it easier for the way that I plan on doing the tutorial. So I'd recommend putting it in there. But we'll go over that at another time, so don't worry if, you, if that didn't make sense or if you're not sure why to do that. I didn't mean to type that. Anyway, guys, uh, I'm Sean the Bro. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, sorry that last week's video was a little bit short and didn't really describe things too well. Um, I was moving, and I just got moved in. I'm actually I'm on the ground right now. I'm not even in my seat or anything because my desk isn't built yet. We, <laughs> we just picked one up, and we have not built it yet, but I wanted to get this video out for you guys. So normally I would do the fighting game tutorial, third person tutorial, and Super Smash Bros. tutorial. Uh, this time I did the fighting game tutorial again because I wanted to have you guys have a complete character selection screen that worked and would bring the characters into the level. I will do a level selection screen as well. However, you'll notice it's going to be basically the exact same thing except instead of instead of setting the character class, we're going to set a level name and then use the level name to open the level which makes sense and should be pretty easy after watching this video so anyway guys thank you so much for watching for real if you enjoyed and you want to see more please subscribe it helps me more than anything else you can do and it helps me know that you guys are interested in this i try to put out more videos for where my subscribers come from and where there's more engagement so like joining the discord and talking and things like that i try to put out more videos for you guys because you guys are putting more effort into watching these and, and communicating with me, and I appreciate that. But anyway, guys, I'm off to unpack some more stuff. Uh, it feels like it never ends. I've been doing it pretty much solid for a whole week, but we're almost done now. So I hope you guys have a great day, and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one, guys.